Right, let's take you to another story now. Water expert Anthony Turton says tourism in KZN is under threat from the collapse of sewage systems in Durban. He says it's also for forcing communities to find ways to simply survive. Turton's been helping them set up and commission boreholes. He joins us now for more details. Uh, Professor, thank you so much for speaking to us here on ENCA. Um, you know, explain to us how bad this issue is. I'm, I'm assuming it emanates from what happened uh, back in July or rather in April. Uh, yes, good morning to you and the listeners. Thanks for having me. Um, um, I am working in the Ugru District Municipality that's centered on Port Shepston. And uh, it's a very, very large area, almost a million people that are supplied by water from the Ugru District Municipality. And those water services have been slowly collapsing for, 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 for years now, to the extent that we have some places that don't have water for weeks on end. And um, I've been working um, as, um, as, as, as part of a rotary group working into some distressed communities, um, most notably uh, the Flower Foundation and Anley Haven, both of which uh, are, are, are places where the elderly and people that are, that are in frail care uh, need to, to live. And of course, their water services have been severely disrupted. So uh, we've been citing a series of boreholes uh, quite successfully just to take these people off grid. Mm. And, you know, every time they drill boreholes, my understanding, Prof, is that um, that would also have a consequence uh, in terms of the systems that are, that, that are supposed to be working anyway. Um, you know, once you've, once you've drilled too many boreholes? Yes, uh, that is true, but we're not at that point in time now. Okay. You know, we're looking at a situation, I mean, for example, if you look at Annerley Haven, Annerley Haven has a frail care facility of around about 70 people. Now, these are people that are frail. They are, you know, that uh, that at the, the end of their lives and they uh, they need uh, care and uh, they just don't have water. So, it, you know, it's, it is a dire situation for them. Uh, we'll have to deal with the, uh, the over abstraction of boils in the future. But uh, I don't think we're anywhere close to that at the moment. What we are seeing, however, in different parts of the country is that people are taking taking the uh, this matter into their own hands as municipalities are failing. We're seeing it in, in Mfuleni, we're seeing it in Etaquini, we're seeing it in the uh, uh, Port Elizabeth area. So it's, I can almost say that it's a national trend. Simply as municipalities are failing, so local communities are, are, are doing what has to be done simply to survive. Hmm. Uh, so in terms of the tourism that you say could be affected uh, by what's happening in Durban at the moment, I mean, this is a very important time of the year for tourism. We remember that uh, the mayor of Eteguini Mkholisi Kaunda last, year, uh, last week rather, actually even had a briefing where he said he'd be swimming at uh, the, um, uh, some of the beaches that were closed because of um, Ekelai, etc. Um, and even after he's done that, and you're saying that there's a water issue, um, that means during this very important time, KZN or Durban could see itself not performing very well. Okay, let's unpack that because there's a lot of uh, lot of important nuances in what you've said there now. Firstly, mm. Durban is one place in KZN. The majority yeah. of KZN is not Durban. Uh, so the, the, the small rural areas, the north mm. and the south coast, there are lots of little towns all the way along there, and they are not supplied by Durban at all. They're completely different matters. Mm. And uh, the, the second thing we need to understand is that the tourism industry is of vital importance uh, to the local economy. You must appreciate that it's a, there's an agricultural economy and then there's a tourism economy. Those are the only two sources of, uh, of revenue for the majority of the people down here. In fact, most of the money into the area that I live in, in the Ugu area, the majority of money that comes into that area comes from social grants and comes from, from pension funds. So we are dealing to, 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 with a very, uh, uh, to a large extent, with a, a relatively poor population of people. And then twice a year, maybe three times a year, you get a lot of tourists that come in there. And yeah. those tourists are extremely important. So your tourism industry has invested very heavily into uh, boreholes, into, into uh, building their own resilience in order to give the, uh, the incoming tourists a good experience. Mm. So it's very vitally important that we get that message out that, that, yes, it's not necessarily a good thing in Durban itself, but that's not the same as, you know, as places like uh, like Ramsgate, Margate, Port Shepston, yeah. et cetera, and places along the North Coast, where, where there's been a big investment by the tourist operators uh, to uh, to make sure that your uh, your tourists have a good uh, a good good holiday. Then, of course, mm. the E. coli issue, that is a sewage-related problem, and that's mostly associated with the big cities. 
uh, you know, where you've got a big sewage works that's failed, then you've got a large amount of sewage that comes into the sea at one place. That is less the case on, on the south coast, where you've got lots of the, the you know, uh, large beaches and uh, relatively smaller population of people and relatively small sewage works. In fact, most of the sewer, sewage there is taken care of by septic tank. So we tend not to have the sewage problem on the south coast. Yeah. All right. Um, so basically what you're saying that is that uh, uh, tourism will not be badly affected because at least the tourism industry has invested a lot in making sure that uh, people don't experience both load shedding and uh, water cuts, etc. Yes, absolutely. And then uh, having said that, I think it's just important that the public must be prudent when they go to the beach. Uh, yeah. We know that that all over the country, every river in the country is contaminated with sewage of some sort. We know that for a fact. Uh, you know, we, we discharge five billion liters of untreated sewage into our rivers every single day. All of that eventually ends up in the ocean somewhere. So, so be prudent if you go into the the beach and i would say don't paddle in lagoons that's the important thing but uh, you know in the open ocean where you would wave action etc i would say that that would be a, a relatively safe place to go and of course if a, a beach has got a blue flag status that's mm -hmm. very important because the blue flag status is not only about water quality it's about a whole lot of other aspects that uh, are there to cater for the for the health and the, and the well-being of the tourists all right professor turton thank you very much for speaking to us